I think Puerto Rico was uh, incredibly successful. Uh, Puerto Rico was actually our toughest one of all because it's an island, so you just you can't truck things onto it. Everything's by boat. Uh, we moved a hospital into Puerto Rico, a tremendous uh, military hospital in the form of a ship. You know that. Uh, and I actually think, and the governor's been very nice, and if you ask the governor, he'll tell you what a great job. Uh, I think probably the hardest one we had by far was Puerto Rico because of the island nature. And I actually think uh, it was one of the best jobs that's ever been done with respect to what this is all about. The job that FEMA and law enforcement and everybody did working along with the governor in Puerto Rico, I think, was tremendous. I think that Puerto Rico was an incredible, unsung success. We begin tonight with a stark illustration of just what's at stake, with a potentially catastrophic hurricane now bearing down on the East Coast, prompting mandatory evacuation orders for more than a million people. The President of the United States today sat in the Oval Office and bragged about his performance in dealing with the biggest disaster he has overseen as President, the hurricane that devastated Puerto Rico. I think Puerto Rico was uh, incredibly successful. Uh, Puerto Rico was actually our toughest one of all because it's an island, so you just you can't truck things onto it. Everything's by boat. Uh, we moved a hospital into Puerto Rico, a tremendous uh, military hospital in the form of a ship. You know that. Uh, and I actually think, and the governor's been very nice, and if you ask the governor, he'll tell you what a great job. Uh, I think probably the hardest one we had by far was Puerto Rico because of the island nature. And I actually think uh, it was one of the best jobs that's ever been done with respect to what this is all about. Puerto Rico got hit not with one hurricane, but with two. And the problem with Puerto Rico is their electric grid and their electric uh, generating plant was dead before the storms ever hit. It was in very bad shape. It was in bankruptcy, uh, had no money. It was largely, you know, it was largely closed. And when the storm hit, they had no electricity essentially before the storm. And when the storm hit, that took it out entirely. Uh, the job that FEMA and law enforcement and everybody did working along with the governor in Puerto Rico, I think, was tremendous. I think that Puerto Rico was an incredible, unsung success. Uh, Texas, we have been given A-pluses for. Uh, Florida, we've been given A-pluses for. I think, in a certain way, the best job we did was Puerto Rico, but nobody would understand that. I mean, that's, it's harder to understand. It was a very hard, very hard thing to do uh, because of the fact they had no electric. Before the storms hit, it was dead, as you probably know. So, uh, We've gotten a lot of uh, receptivity, a lot of thanks for the job we've done in Puerto Rico. The uh, unsung success the president is talking about there, um, the death toll from Hurricane Maria was formally raised just this month to nearly 3,000 people. It took nearly a year for power to be fully restored to the island, a failure that helped contribute to hundreds of deaths in the aftermath of that storm. And that's the record that Donald Trump is today celebrating. A president who today pumped his fists when arriving at a September 11th memorial event, whose White House is actively working against him to safeguard the nation, according to Bob Woodward's new book and a recent anonymous op-ed in the New York Times, and who looks at what happened in Puerto Rico and sees not an unfathomable humanitarian tragedy and governing failure, but a rousing success. That man is now once again charged with protecting the country from disaster. Joining me now, Representative Luis Gutierrez, Democrat of Illinois, whose parents migrated from Puerto Rico, who has announced he is giving up his seat in Congress next year, moved to the island next year to help with the recovery efforts. Um, your response to what the president had to say about Puerto Rico today? Wow. Well, uh, it might be, although I'm sure that there are others that will compete, one of his just biggest fabrications and lies. Um, how do you celebrate and declare a success when officially now the deaths are over 3,000. And you know, Chris, that's the latest study, one accepted by the government of Puerto Rico that never wanted to change the numbers and was complicit with this president in trying to hide the real calamity and deaths and the lack of action of the American uh, government. But let me say this, the Harvard study said it was over 4,000. And Chris, I was there within 10 days. I was there within 10 days, not because the government allowed me to go or facilitate it, because Donald Trump did everything he could to stop any oversight. 
over the conduct of the American government and what it was doing to facilitate. I think the mayor of San Juan, Carmen Julin, was absolutely correct. You let people die. And you know, if you think a success is having the deaths of people on your hands, and let me, because I think it's important to put it into context, Chris. He said two things. He said, well, you know, the people of Puerto Rico would be better off, but they want us to do everything for them. So he called us lazy. And then he said, wow, you're busting my budget. He called us worthless or not. Notorious of, 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 of sufficient government. This is a president of the United States with a catastrophic situation in Puerto Rico, unprecedented in Puerto Rico, with thousands of people dying and saying how expensive and how lazy we're. The only one who was lazy was you, Mr. President. You were lazy and you weren't on duty and people died because of it. You know, what I keep thinking about as, this, as we look at uh, uh, Hurricane Florence as it comes towards the Carolina coast at a Category 4, very, very dire warnings about what it could bring. There has still, as far as I can tell, been no really thorough or systematic after-action report about how it was the American government allowed 3,000 Americans to die in an American territory, and that seems relevant to whatever hurricane preparedness happens in the upper 50 states. Yeah. Well, he bragged today, Chris, about how ready he was, and he, and he kept telling us how big the storm was, because, you know, he likes using monosyllable words like big and huge and great, and he used them all to describe the oncoming hurricane. Instead of reassuring the American public about what was there to make sure that they could be kept safe, because everything is huge and big, and, of course, you want to know what I fear? is the calamity because of the lack of coordination of the government with the National Guard and with local government, the lack of responsiveness and preparedness of this government, because the president, he wants to find out who is the one that wrote that op-ed piece uh, about the chaos in the White House, because he wants the Justice Department. He is so consumed uh, by the calamity that exists and the chaos that exists that he's not really prepared and focused because he spends every weekend golfing instead of preparing. You know, 15 of the top managers at FEMA are acting. They're not even in their permanent positions. They haven't even taken time to give them their jobs. But let me just say this, too, because I think it's important, Chris, as we look at crisis like this, whether it's the Muslim band, uh, whether it's transgender community uh, being eliminated from the military, any of these uh, terrible, hateful things that this president does, let me say this. On behalf of the people of Puerto Rico, how thankful they are to the American people and to the American public that has put in tens of millions of dollars in real resources and made a difference and has stopped deaths from occurring. I, I want to congratulate the American people and that resistance that exists on so many levels. A final thought about this. If Democrats were to take the House this fall, uh, do you think it would be on the agenda to actually do some oversight over the, 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 the response in Puerto Rico? That is going to be one of our most important um, actions. And yes, I won't be in Congress. Yes, next March, I intend to be in the island of Puerto Rico. Um, and, and, and I'm going to be there to facilitate. But let me tell you what I'm going to do, Chris. I've been to Pennsylvania, where Donald Trump won by 40,000 votes. And you know where I, I, I went? I went into smaller towns in Pennsylvania where there are large Puerto Rican pockets of voters. And I've been to Florida. I'm going to go to Florida this coming weekend. And let me just say, the president, he should understand there are going to be electoral consequences because hundreds of thousands of Puerto Ricans had to flee the island because of what this government did not do and how it did not intervene. They now live in Florida. They now live in Pennsylvania. And, Mr. President, you should know they are registering to vote, they are mobilizing, they are organizing, and the people on the island of Puerto Rico are going to implore, are going to urge, are going to inspire the Puerto Rican community of Florida and of Pennsylvania to come out and vote in 2020 for a president that loves the people of the island of Puerto Rico and loves the people of the United States of America. All right. Representative Luis Gutierrez, thank you so much thank for being you. with me.